Hi guys, I'm John Barker. You're at the Skull and Mortar Kitchen. Today we are going to make baby back ribs on the smoker. Holler at your boy. All right guys, so the first thing we need to do is just get a paper towel and pat these guys dry. We don't want any excess goo or blood or anything on top of it. Now if you look here too, you can see that these are pretty fatty. You can make the choice to trim this off if you want, but me personally, I'm gonna leave it there because I don't think we're gonna have any trouble rendering that out. We're gonna flip them over. Just gonna pat them dry once again. Again, it's okay to have some moisture on there, but we just wanna get the majority off. As you can see, these ribs have been trimmed okay. They got a little bit hanging off again. I'm not really all that worried about that. Now you can tell they do have the membrane on them. Now you can remove the membrane if you want. It's not that hard. You probably already know how to do it. Me, I don't really care that much. I prefer just to score it. I don't think it does anything. Uh, I don't think it changes anything adversely. Next, we're just gonna make sure we season it. We're gonna use our skull and mortar rub available at skullandmortar.com. Again, it's the perfect mix of sugary and peppery notes. Make sure you come up on the sides, get those edges, get all of that. We're just gonna flip them over and we're gonna make sure we get the front side again. We wanna get a nice heavy bark going. That's all we're using for this first round is a straight up skull and mortar rub. Skull and mortar rub is perfect for pork. That's it guys, that's all the pre-prep these baby backs are gonna take. We're gonna get them on the smoker at 225 degrees and we're gonna leave them there probably for a couple hours. We're gonna check them every hour or so. We're looking for color, we're looking for pullback, we're looking for flexibility. We're gonna set these directly on the rack. We wanna make sure that they get maximum smoke, they get the right amount of heat, and we just we kinda want that fat from the ribs to drip down and steam back up a little bit. So, we'll be back, we'll check on them here in about an hour. Now we've got our ribs looking pristine as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and wrap these. We got the color we want. We got the smoke in them that we want. You can still, they're still good and moist. So we're gonna throw that to the side. Just gonna pepper this with some uh, brown sugar right on the top. This will add some sweetness, a little depth of sweet to it. You can never go wrong with sugar, right? Now, I'm gonna use some of this jalapeno honey that's whipped. I got it from uh, uh, some local farmer's market. Check that out, uh, Wildfire Ridge Honey, Anderson, Indiana. Check those guys out if you get a time to support local business. Now this is gonna be sweet, it's gonna be spicy. Speaking of spicy, go to Hell Terry, we didn't forget about you. Then we're gonna drop some butter right in here. Then we're gonna take this we're gonna flip it over face down. We're gonna face down it right on top of that. And then the key is here, you have to wrap these tight. So good, tight wrap. We throw these back on the smoker. We're leaving it at 2.30 and we're gonna roll out. We're gonna check on it uh, probably about an hour. I'm expecting about another two hours to go. All right guys, our ribs are looking pretty good here. Now, if you take a look at these bones, you notice if we wanted to twist these out, we probably could. So that's exactly what we're looking for. We don't want them to be all the way twistable, but we want them to be right there. Look at that, Ben, that's some thick rib too. Like the meat on here is really thick. You can see it's still pliable, but if we wanted to pop this in half, we could easily do that. 
Go ahead and flip them back over. We want the bone side up. See that? Those are definitely split right open if we wanted them to. We're gonna go ahead and glaze this with our skull and mortar honey barbecue sauce. You can get yours at skullandmortar.com. Boom, we're just gonna hit it like that. And then we are going to brush them. Come on, make sure you get the bones covered, get the sides. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna go ahead and hit the other side. We're gonna take just a little bit of our barbecue rub, hit that as well, just to kind of thicken that flavor up there. Now we're gonna put these back on the smoker. We're gonna keep the temperature still at 230. These are gonna take about another 20 minutes or so and the glaze should set nice. You wanna be careful not to burn the sauce. It's easy to burn the sauce right here. So I'm gonna get these back on the smoker. Look at these ribs, guys. They look phenomenal. Check that out. We got some good pull back there. We didn't burn the glaze. The back holding together, looking nice, man. All in all, I would say that this is exactly what we were looking for. But the most important thing is not how they look. It's how they friggin' taste. And what we're gonna do here is we're just, when I cut these, I just go right to the bone and I try to cut it alongside the bone so when I get the pieces, the pieces look straight. It doesn't necessarily matter if the bone is crooked, it only matters if the piece looks straight. I like to use my boning knife for this. I know a lot of people use chef's not chef knives, they use carving knives, all that, but me, I like the precision of this boning knife. I just get a couple of good swipes in there. Helps me keep my uh, accuracy, helps me not tear up my ribs. Maybe there's somebody out there who's a little more skilled with the knife than I am who would feel differently and that's okay. Do what works for you. Guys, yeah, let's take a look at this. Look at this moisture. Look at the smoke penetration we got there. The glaze is nice and set. Guys, these ribs look fantastic. I cannot wait to take a bite. This rib right here is calling my name. Look at that bad boy, that's beautiful. Pretty stoked about this, guys. Now the way to tell if you made a perfect rib is not if it falls off the bone. That means it's overdone. What you wanna do is be able to bite through it and leave your mouth, uh, your kind of bite mark through the meat and pull it clean off the bone. So you wanna be able to pull it clean off the bone. So let's see if we nailed these ribs. These are from good. These are really good. Mm. Guys, it's got sweet, it's got peppery, it's got a little bit of heat from that honey, that jalapeno honey we used. Look at that. Come on, watch that. Pulls right off. Clean pull, man, perfect. That's it, man, you're looking to make some ribs? I'll talk with my mouth full. I don't even care. I don't care. Um, I have no class, but I love food. And these ribs are fire, my friends. I don't know how you like your ribs, but I like to dip mine in my favorite sauce. Hopefully yours is Skull and Mortar. You can get it at skullandmortar.com. We have two sauces about to drop a third and a fourth, as well as a new rub. So check that out. It helps support the channel. It helps us keep making videos for you. That being said, my friends, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll see you next week. We'll have a brand new video. Check me out at Triton. I'm coming. Forgot what I was gonna say. I'm sure I had some clever outro, but I don't. So we'll just say go to hell, Terry. We're out. Have a good one. I'll see you guys next week, maybe. I don't know. <laughs>